Hello, creators. Welcome to the channel. Today, we are exploring Kung Fu UI again. In my video before last, I compared the outpainting and inpainting results of different Quantas versions of the fill model with the original Black Forest Labs model. I also shared a practical outpainting workflow that lets you expand a large area around a small image. This time, I want to focus on inpainting since some of my Patreon sponsors have been asking for it. At first, I thought creating an inpainting workflow would be simple and not very technical. But after spending a few days researching it, I realized it takes quite a bit of effort to get really good results. The workflow I built this time is super versatile. It also supports Quantest models, which makes it much friendlier for video memory. You can use this for all kinds of inpainting tasks, like swapping this woman's hat, changing her clothing, fixing distorted faces, or even fixing those weird AI-generated hands. Let me show you how to use this workflow. First, bypass the other node groups and activate the first group, which loads the models. I've already configured it, so let's run the workflow. The first node here is loaded with a few model. It's very versatile and works for both outpainting and inpainting. I'm using the quantized Q5 version of the model, which only takes up 8 gigabytes. If you don't have enough video memory, you can use the Q4 version, which is just 6.8 GB. The difference in results between these and Black Forest Labs 20 GB model is actually very small. I verified this in my video before last, so you can use them with confidence. Besides, this is just for the first round of inpainting. The final image will go through a second round of inpainting with another model to get the best results. For the first round, speed is the priority, so the node on the right is loaded with a turbo LoRa to speed up image generation. The node below loads a checkpoint that determines the final quality of the image. This is why the workflow works with low VRAM. If you don't have enough video memory, you can load a quantized checkpoint like Flux Realistic. I talked about this in a previous video, which I'll link below. It's only 6.8 GB, but it produces decent image quality. There's another Turbo LoRa node here, but generally it's not very useful. So its model strength is set to zero. You can use it later for tasks like fixing faces or hands. Next, activate the second node group. This group loads an image and limits its size using the constraint image node to make sure the video memory won't be overloaded if your image is big but the inpainting area is small. You don't need to limit the size of the image. We'll crop the inpainting area later, so it's really just the size of that area that's challenging for video memory. Now activate the third node group. This area is where we create the mask for inpainting. You can generate the mask automatically, adjust it manually, or just paint it manually from scratch. If you are working with a very large image, like a 4K image, and you don't have enough video memory, I recommend skipping the automatic mask generation with a segment entity node and just painting the mask manually. But if your image is not very large, then this node works really well. To use it, just enter what you want the node to recognize. For example, let's type here and wait a moment. You can see that it has successfully segmented the hair area. Let's try it again with shirt. And now with jeans. Let's try shirt and jeans. Finally, let's try guitar. This time though, it doesn't recognize it correctly. That's probably because the guitar is partially covered by the arm, splitting it into two parts, so the node struggles to identify it properly. If we want to impaint the guitar, like turning this electric guitar into an acoustic guitar, there's an easy workaround. Instead of relying on a prompt, we can leave it empty and paint the mask manually. I'll switch to the preview bridge image node here and simply paint over the guitar. This gives us more control and ensures we capture the right area for inpainting. The area and painting is a bit bigger than the electric guitar itself because acoustic guitars are generally larger than the electric guitars. I also paint the entire guitar neck since just inpainting a portion of it might cause the generated neck and pattern to not match the original. I'm going to include the woman's hand as well because the inpainting process could affect or distort pixels in that area. 
Once the mask is ready, let's save it and run a workflow. In the note below, you can enter what you want the pin painted area to become. For example, since I want to turn this electric guitar into an acoustic guitar, I'll type the words here. On the right, there is a girl mask node that slightly expands the impending area to make sure everything blends smoothly. Next, let's activate the next node group. Now let's talk about the crop by mask node, which is really useful for better impending results. Let's take this hand fixing as an example. If we impaint just the hand in a small area, the result won't look very detailed or accurate. This node helps us crop the mask while keeping only the white area and a bit of the surrounding space. After that, it can crop the original image based on the size of the mask and use it as the base image for impainting. This approach ensures that the impainted hand, for example, will be more accurate and detailed. Instead of cropping out just the hand exactly, this method reserves some extra space around it. That way, when the AI generates the impainted hand, it can reference the light and shadow in the surrounding area. This makes the result look much more natural and in harmony with the rest of the image. The size of this reserved area can be adjusted using the parameters in this node. Try to keep it as small as possible while still ensuring the impainting blends smoothly with the surrounding area. Alright, let's go back to the task of impainting the guitar. For the impaint guitar task, the crop by mass node isn't particularly necessary since the impainting area is quite large. That said, cropping is still better than not cropping at all. I've set the sampler steps to 8 since we are using Turbo LoRa, and we can leave the other parameters at their default values. Let's go ahead and run the workflow. As you can see, the impainting part has some noticeable issues like errors in the hand area. This node here helps us place the impainted image back into the original image. That wraps up the first round of impainting. Now let's move on to the second round of impainting to fix the problems left over from the first pass. I've already set up the parameters here, so I'll go ahead and run the workflow first. This mask girl fast node expands and blurs the original mask. This allows us to impaint on a slightly larger mask, which helps fix any problems that might have appeared around the edges of the impainted area from the previous round. On the right, there's another crop by mask node. You might be wondering why we are cropping again. The reason is that the previous cropping step might not always be useful depending on the situation. For example, when repairing a face, impainting often requires a single round. In that case, I bypass the first round of impainting altogether because the field model doesn't perform well on faces or hands. Instead, I use the flex fine-tuned model directly, which produces much better results. Back to the task of impainting the guitar. We are now running a second round of impainting to fix some of the detail issues that showed up after the first round. For this pass, I'm using the flex fine-tuned model. The checkpoint I'm using here is the stoical new reality model. It's important not to set the denoising strength in the sample too high, just enough to correct the details without overdoing it. Let's wait for the image to generate. Alright, the image is done. Now the guitar issue is almost gone, but there's still an extra finger on the right hand. This could make it harder to fix the hand later, so it's better to get the correct number of fingers first. If there are minor issues with the finger details, those are much easier to fix later on. Let's regenerate the image and see what we get. Okay, this one looks much better. Both the guitar and the hand are fixed. If you are still noticing minor issues, you can repeat the impending process a couple more times to refine the details. Things like strings, the fretboard, and the top fret can be tricky for AI to handle perfectly. But the Flux model does a fantastic job compared to earlier models. Let's activate the next group and fix the hand. I'm using a LoRa specifically for hand repair here, and it works really well. For the prompt, you can use something like detailed hand or perfect hand. These are the trigger words for this LoRa. In the Ultralytics Detector Provider node, I select the model that detects the hand region. If you are fixing faces instead, you can select a model with face in the name. This face detailer node isn't just for faces. It can also repair cloning details. For example, in this previous impaint clothing example, I used a model with deep fashion in its name to get great results. Now back to fixing the hand. 
Since the problem with the hand isn't too severe, I lower the denoising strength a bit to avoid overprocessing. Now let's run the workflow. All right, the image is generated, and the hand looks pretty good now. If the hand still isn't perfect or need more tweaking, you can run the workflow again specifically for the hand area, and it should resolve any remaining issues. I hope this workflow helps you achieve the in-painting results you are looking for. Christmas is just around the corner, so I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful holiday with your beloved ones. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.